In tonight's webinar, I will discuss the important topic of insisted small redworm and how you can plan your worming program to prevent this threat to your horse. In the previous webinar on sustainable worming, we learned that effective control of internal parasites means keeping control of the burden in an individual horse, but just as importantly, preventing the buildup of the eggs and larvae on the pasture. As well as being effective in the short term, this approach must be planned and targeted in such a way as to make it sustainable for long-term use. When we worm a horse, the majority of worms inside the horse will be killed, preventing disease in that individual animal and also minimising the number of eggs passed back onto the pasture. Unfortunately, while this is mostly true, we know that some types of worms are becoming resistant to the wormers and in some cases, this can mean that some wormers are no longer effective. A major factor in the development of resistance is the too frequent and indiscriminate use of worming treatments. For this reason, today the basis of worm control is done through testing and worming on a demonstrated need to basis. In addition, it is vital that when you do worm, you choose the right product for the parasite that you want to control. A sustainable worming approach means worming as little as possible, but as much as necessary. Whilst the majority of a plan can be based on testing, there are still some parasite threats for which no reliable test exists. For these threats, worming should be performed based on knowledge of the parasite itself, the time of year, and the threat it is likely to pose to each animal. This approach is called strategic dosing. Insisted small redworm is a parasite for which there is currently no definitive test, therefore a strategic annual dose is recommended for all grazing horses. This webinar will explain what insisted small redworm are, why they are important, which animals are at risk, and how they can be prevented. The small redworm is the most common parasite to affect adult horses today. This parasite is small, approximately one and a half to two and a half centimeters in length and red in color. It spends part of its life cycle on the pasture and it's thought that most grazing horses are exposed at some stage of their life. The insisted small redworm are one of the developing immature stages of the small redworm. This stage occurs inside the wall of the horse's intestine where it can cause serious damage to the gut structure and the function. This picture shows the inside of a horse's gut where the larvae have entered the wall and caused the small red dotted areas over the whole surface of the gut. This diagram illustrates the stages that a small red worm will go through during its lifetime. Some of these stages occur inside the horse, shown here in brown, and some occur on the pasture, shown in green. The cycle starts with eggs being passed in the droppings of horses onto the pasture. Once on the pasture, the egg then needs to hatch and larvae emerge that must go through developmental stages on that pasture before they are able to reinfect the horse. Development is dependent on weather conditions and the warm wet weather during the spring, summer and early months are the ideal developmental environment. At these times, pasture contamination with larvae and eggs is highest at, um, throughout the year. Infected larvae are swallowed by the grazing horse where they pass into the stomach and on into the, to the small then large intestine. Once in the large intestine, the larvae will burrow into the inner lining of the gut itself and continue to develop in small cyst-like structures, shown here, shown on this stage of the life cycle. This process is often a continual development. However, sometimes the larvae can stop developing and enter a sort of hibernating state where they are properly known as inhibited insisted small redworm although this is usually referred to just as insisted small redworm. 
After a period of time, the larvae will then emerge from their cysts into the lumen of the gut, where they finish their development into egg-laying adults, and the cycle starts again. During the time when they are encysted, the larvae cause damage to the gut wall, and because they are hidden inside the wall itself, they are very resistant to many types of wormers. The reasons for entering a hibernation state are not fully clear, but it most commonly occurs during the winter period when conditions are not favourable for eggs to survive on the pasture, suggesting that environmental temperature is a crucial factor. However, less commonly, the condition can occur at any time of the year when other factors such as the horse's immune system and nutritional status may play an important role. If insisted small redworm accumulates in the gut in large numbers, they can cause significant damage with loss of ability to absorb nutrients and water. This picture is a cross section of a small sample of the horse's gut viewed under the microscope. It shows numerous cysts, each with a larvae inside. And it's clear from this picture that considerable disruption of the gut's normal absorptive surface will occur as a result of these cysts. Very heavy or untreated burdens of insisted small redworm can lead to poor condition over the winter period, or more seriously, a condition known as larval sciathostomonosis. This occurs when large numbers of larvae all emerge from the gut wall at the same time, causing damage and inflammation. Somewhat ironically, this can occur after a worming treatment, especially if the wormer does not specifically target the insisted stages. To really illustrate, the small red worm life cycle involves a period of normal development within the gut wall. Typically, over the winter months, large numbers of larvae can enter the gut wall and become inhibited inside it. In a way, this behavior is very similar to humans or animals seeking shelter during the harsher winter conditions, and it's a survival tactic of the parasite. When external environmental conditions are favorable, such as in the spring, these larvae may all wake up and emerge at the same time, causing massive damage to the horse's gut. The signs of larval cyathostomonosis include a severe watery diarrhea that usually develops rapidly over a few days. There is often colic, and the horse is dull, depressed, and very reluctant to move. In the early stages, they may continue to eat, but this is replaced later on with a lack of appetite. Typically, there is rapid and severe weight loss over only a few weeks. And unfortunately, it can be fatal in up to 50% of cases. Because the parasite is commonly found on the pasture and in the droppings of horses, any horse with access to grazing or communing holdill areas are considered to be at risk. The condition is very common in the late winter or early spring when weather conditions start to improve. There is a strong tendency for animals under five years old to be most commonly affected, although it can occur in horses of any age, especially in those that are already ill with other conditions and are immunosuppressed. In some circumstances, treatment over the winter period with a non-larvicidal wormer, so one that doesn't target the insisted small redworm, may precipitate symptoms. Tragically, once symptoms are established, it has been reported that up to 50% of affected horses will not be able to be saved. Therefore, it's essential that we aim to effectively treat and prevent symptoms before they start. The signs of larval cyathostomonosis are very typical, and when they develop, diagnosis based on clinical signs alone is often possible. However, once signs are apparent, the damage to the gut has already occurred. Remember that the insisted small redworm have probably been undetected inside the horse's gut for a number of months. In the early stages, the horse may show little or no signs of being ill, making diagnosis at this stage very difficult. 
Risk factors and worming history can be useful for identifying those horses in which a large insisted burden may occur. So for example, a young horse with a poor worming history over the summer will be at greater risk than a mature horse that has been on a good worming plan throughout the year. It is essential to note that because insisted larvae do not produce eggs, a negative or low fecal egg count does not rule out the possibility of insisted small redworm. Further, any horse at any age can be affected. Currently, there is no definitive test for the condition, and tragically, many horses are only finally diagnosed at post-mortem examination. The fact that insisted small redworm are difficult to diagnose can be pretty scary. It is important to say, though, that not all horses with an insisted burden will go on and develop the severe signs associated with larval surface dominosis. Furthermore, by following some simple steps, you can dramatically reduce the risk to your horse. These steps can be broken down into 1. Maintaining a clean pasture 2. Controlling the small redworm burden in the grazing season and three, dosing specifically for the insisted small redworm in late autumn or early winter. The first step is to ensure that your horse's grazing is as clean as possible. The best way of doing this is by regular collection of droppings or poo picking to remove the developing and infected stages of the small redworm. Research has shown that even just twice day weekly removal will significantly decrease the parasite pasture burden. This simple natural investment will not only reduce the worm burden, but also help to prevent pasture getting horsesick, and surely has to be worth the effort. If this is not possible, other methods such as grazing the sheep and cattle or resting the pasture may also be helpful. If harrowing or resting are used, it is advisable not to use the pasture again in the same grazing season. You should aim to harrow just before a dry hot spell wherever possible. Reducing paddock size and only having one horse per paddock can be another way to make removal of droppings more manageable. The use of faecal egg counts throughout the grazing season, typically the beginning of March to the end of October, will help to identify those horses who are shedding large numbers of small redworm eggs and those who are not. Treating these specifically identified horses with a wormer effective against small redworm will help to keep that horse healthy and also reduce the number of larval stages on the pasture. Remember that foals and young horses will need treating more frequently than adults do and a plan based on faecal egg counts alone is unlikely to be sufficient for this age group. Your vet SQP or pharmacist will be able to advise you which products to use and how frequently to administer them based on your individual circumstances. To enable them to do this, always make sure you keep a full and accurate history of any tests or worming treatments given throughout the year. Control of the insisted stages is aimed at stopping the larvae from hibernating or killing them as soon as possible after they have. And for this reason, treatment in late autumn or the early winter, specifically targeted at the insisted larval stages, is recommended. At this time, instead of completing the life cycle, larvae are starting to insist and hibernate in the gut wall. It's a dynamic process with some continuing to develop, whilst others will stay inside the cysts. Eventually, as the winter approaches, the large majority of any burden will be insisted and there will be very little ongoing development or reinfection from the pasture. It is advisable to work with your prescriber to time the insisted small redworm dose correctly for your horse and its individual circumstances. Dosing too early, for example, when weather conditions still allow larval development on the pasture, could allow time for your horse to be reinfected before the winter comes. Conversely, dosing too late could mean that large burdens have already become established and damage to the gut lining has already occurred. 
In some circumstances, such as when a large burden has been demonstrated or when a horse is considered to be at high risk, it may be necessary or advisable to treat again in early spring. Your vet, SQP or pharmacist will be able to advise you what to dose with and when. Only two active ingredients are effective against the insisted stages of small redworm. These are a single dose of moxidectin or a five-day course of fenbendazole. Due to well-recognized and widespread resistance to fenbendazole, it is recommended that this active is only used where it has first been proven to be effective using a specific resistance test. Despite the dangers of insisted small redworm and a recognized need to dose before the winter's months, a recent survey revealed that one in five horse owners questioned were still not treating for the condition. Perhaps more worryingly, 18% of those who thought that they were treating for insisting small redworm used a product which was not licensed or effective against this condition. At this time of year, it is vitally important that you discuss with your prescriber whether your horse has been effectively treated for insisted small redworm. Keeping an accurate and up-to-date record of worming treatments and testing throughout the year enables your prescriber to make the right decision now for your horse. In summary, insisted small redworm is a common and potentially fatal parasite threat which can affect any horse. Good pasture management and an effective worming control plan based on fecal egg counts in the grazing season can help to reduce the risk. However, Insisted small redworm do not show up on a standard faecal egg count and it is recommended that all at-risk horses receive a crucial annual dose effective against insisted small redworm in the late autumn or early winter months. For further information, please visit our website at www.esrw.co.uk where you can test your knowledge to help you discuss the best treatment options with your vet, SQP or pharmacist.